Hello YouTube, um, I thought I'd just share a little project that I'm quickly doing. Um, basically I've got bored on Saturday um, and I thought I'd do a little video for you. Um, when I first started Kydexing I bought a mix pack of loads of different uh, thicknesses of Kydex and colours to see what I liked. This is some of the black stuff I got and it's just really thick and um, it's not particularly useful for the stuff I do. That said I can it's good scrap and it's good for playing about with. So I've got a little strip of this which I've cut into two bits and what I'm going to do today is try and make up a little um, codex sheath for this Decepticon that I've got. It's not legal to carry, it's never something I'm going to carry, which is why I'm using scrap material and it's just a bit of fun really. Um, I've also got this cheap uh, tech lock from, or sorry, tech lock clone from China. Um, I've got a load of these, the reason being is these are a couple of quid as opposed to 20 odd quid. So, um, yeah some bits and all the rest of it. All I was going to do is I've got a piece of Kydex here and this was going to form around the top and then I've got a smaller piece which is going to sit across the back of it and then that will be proud uh, that will be proud out from your belt. So that will sit flat on there and then it will be moulded up and around with a tech lock on it. Um, before I went into moulding this I had to have a little think about how it was actually going to draw and how I wanted it to draw. Um, realistically it needs to draw kind of vertically like this from a kydex sheath um, or horizontally like this but any way you do it the reason you can't do it um, this way is because it's got a belt clip on and you'd be kind of you need to pull it to the point where you've got access to that so if you do it backwards, where this is at the back there, you pull it out and then you've got to flip it around to a point where you can use it, which is a little bit pointless. So it has to be gripping it from this belt clip kind of side and pulling up with this at the end. So when that goes into Kydex, the Kydex is going to wrap around like this. And as you can see on the end, that is going to get in the way of you drawing it. It's just going to hook on and it won't, the kydex won't allow it to be drawn. Um, it's the same whenever you do pistols and they've got uh, sights sitting at the top, you have to make a channel for the sights to slip along. So that being the case, I've just uh, sanded up a little bit of wood and that's just going to sit up across the top there. And as you can see, that'll make a nice channel in the kydex, that's just going to be air when it's kydexed and that will give that a nice area for it to just slip through and give you a nice draw. All of the grip you're going to get on this is going to be where the kydex slips into these holes and these holes and all of these little angles that it's got going on. So I'm not going to make you sit through the um, heating up, I'm going to do a little quick uh, shot away and the next thing you're going to see is this coming out of the uh, oven that I've got. Um, sat onto the knife itself and then we'll get a quick press out of it and get the top bit done and well, we'll see how it comes out. Let's uh, have a look. Right, just very quickly while this is um, all heating up in the uh, oven there, um, this is the press I've got. You'll see how it works in a minute. It's basically just a base, a lid and then these sliding clamps slide down onto it and give it the pressure. Um, there's a million of these all over Tinterweb. Um, all I've done is, so far, is taken a knife and sellotape the wooden block onto it. This is currently sitting in the oven, um, not any high heat, it's just sitting on the bottom rung there, um, just to put some heat into it so I can get a little bit better definition. I've also got the foam sitting up on top so I can put a bit of heat into the foam. It's just sitting up on top of the um, oven there. Kydex is just about ready to come out. Um, I put a single sheet on the bottom because I want the bottom to remain mostly flat. And then I've got three layers on top. I'm also giving this cheap foam a try. I usually use a nice silicon foam, but I've never given this cheap stuff a go. So I thought, I'd, well, let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, next time you uh, see this, it will be coming out of the oven. And that's it quickly clamped up. I'm just going to get another couple of little clamps just so I can get it nice and even. So 
baby one on the front, never hurts. Right, with any luck, it doesn't make particularly good viewing because you've got to uh, get all this done pretty quick because obviously you don't want to lose the heat. But with any luck, that should give us a reasonable uh, top. And once the top's done, I'll lay everything back in, but I'll put this bit, which I'll heat up now in fact, Um, all of that, I will sit that under the bottom and that should give us the much flatter uh, base. Um, yeah, so we'll cut back when that's all heated up. Um, and in a few minutes time, we can uh, we can take this out and see what it looks like. So, uh, well, see you in a couple of minutes. Right, this has been uh, cooling down for about 10 minutes. Let's have a quick look. There you go, as you can see, nicely moulded. Crack the sight. He's a bit of cleaning, but as you can see, there's some lovely definition in there of the uh, internals. That's probably going to need to be quite loose, actually. So I'm going to have to put this together uh, with the rivets quite wide. If I have it in really tight, it's going to hold this down quite uh, heavily. If on the other hand I bring them out a little bit, it should give me a little bit more leeway and a little bit more spring in the Kydex. But either way, let's heat up the... Um, oh, also as you can see, if I'm not up with the camera, the base doesn't protrude anywhere near as much as the top does. This is why this is why I wanted to rig it the way I did. So that when I've got the... Where is it going? The tech lock sitting on the back. There's not going to be... Hang on, let's line that up. There's not going to be that much uh, sitting out from the... It's not going to be sitting up as, out as much as it would be from this side. Where you can see it has to sit out quite a lot. So, yeah. Well, let's heat up the other piece of um, Kydex and bash this all in and uh, see how it comes out. Right, the um, Kydex is uh, just heating up in the uh, oven over there. You can see the... Uh, elements nice and red hot. What I'm going to do when I bring this piece out is, as I said before, because I want the back nice and slim and I want all of this to match up properly, I'm going to take the knife and put it and match this back up to the kydex. Then I'm going to put the small sheet just on the back there and then drop this on and clamp it all down. Um, because I'm looking for more definition now on the bottom rather than top, I'm going to use a couple pieces thickness and then a couple on top just to um, allow for a little bit of um, cushioning on the kydex here. The heat from the knife and the kydex isn't going to deform this. Um, but as as you can see, adding just a little bit of heat into it um, allows you to get some fantastic... See if we can get the light on that. Some absolutely fantastic uh, definition on the inside. And on the outside. I mean, it's not brilliant because it's horrendously hot, it's horrendously thick Kydex for what I'm using. Uh, I think this is, yeah that's just about ready to come out. So if I get all this ready again, um, yeah as I said when it gets to, as I said before sorry, when it gets to the actual um, clamping it down I'm afraid it does make particularly good video. I'm just going to have to rush through it so I can get it in nice and quick. So you have to excuse me a little bit. Right, I've got some foam sitting on top of the actual oven itself, which is going to be nice and warm. Uh, again, to just try and keep some heat into it. So that's the piece that's going to be get, uh, sitting down there. So, knife out. That's going to sit in there. Then we've got our... square of kydex, sit on the back, our lid, 
on, let's just make sure that's centered. And let's clamp this up. Uh, same as before, we'll just clamp up the front and back. And we'll give this another 10 minutes to uh, harden up and see what we've got. So, see you in 10. Right, I've uh, just pulled this out and there's your bottom bit and your top bit, or however you'd call it. Um, yeah, and that's a uh, sheath it. Um, I'm going to have to, as you can see, if I, see if I can get the camera to pick it up, these little indents here and here, where the, the little indents for there and there, when they're in, obviously they hold it, uh, get it right away up. They hold it really solid. You can see they kind of fit into the gap just there. But when you're trying to put the blade back in, obviously you've got to kind of squeeze them past these little lips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat these up with the blowgun and then just bend them back out a little bit. So these bits are a little bit flatter and it, it just kind of it eases this whole thing going in. I've also bent this slightly... Uh, curved so that when I've got the tech lock sitting on the tech lock doesn't sit too far away uh, too far away from the actual sheath itself as if it was sat square like that you can see it's quite a bit of distance in here if I tilted it like that then it takes that down to almost nothing and that's I can fill that with washers so all I'm going to do now is sculpt this up on the Vibro saw, and then I can get it drilled up and well put together. So let's give it a little bit of a cut, a little bit of a polish, and see where we're at. So, all I'm going to do here is just sculpt around the and cut the excess off, kind of cut around the bottoms, and just have a bit of a feel really as to how it should. Uh, how it all needs to go together and just cut off some of the bits. Right, now that's uh, basically to shape. I'm going to clamp it all up, drill it all up and we'll see once it's all drilled up and we've got it kind of where it all needs to sit then we'll take it to the sander and we'll start sanding out all the extra bits that we need to so I'll just get this drilled up and um, all the holes put in normally you'd um, put some sort of eyelets into this um, because it's just scrap I'm not going to bother doing that I'm just going to drill straight through and bolt the tech lock straight to it there's no point in wasting materials on something that's basically just a bit of fun so yeah, we'll drill it all up and we'll uh, then we can start doing some of the fine detail work. Right, so just drilling these up. I've already made a tiny little dot, you can see there, which is going to be my first hole. And then these tech locks, uh, they require holes that are, let me just measure this up, 31mm apart. So I've got my vernier set up. All I'm going to do is Put one tip of it on there, the other tip further up the sheath, and then just work it in. And that will give me my second hole at the correct spacing. Um, that's it really, let's get drilling. Right, for the um, actual uh, kydex, Sorry for the actual tech locks fit fittings. These um, the diameter of this shaft here is five mil, so I've gone half a mil over just to give me a bit of leeway when I'm fitting these. So when I fit the tech lock on, it's not going to be uh, flapping around everywhere. For the other side, I'm going to need to put a couple of little rivets in. Um, they can be put in. What I'll do, in fact, is I'll just put a single rivet in there, so it gives me a little bit more flex in the opening. Um, because I don't need anything more than that. In fact, I might put 
two down the bottom there and leave the top open so it's got so it can allow itself to open up a little bit. There's nothing I can do about spacing the tech lock. Um, I could have put uh, instead of the, you've got the three holes here, I could have put um, just two holes here and here, but I decided that I'd prefer them more spaced out. So that'll sit roughly like this, and well, that'll do it. So I'll uh, just get these holes uh, drilled for the um, small rivets and then we can go and shape it all up. Alright so I've got a couple of holes for the rivets, I've got some holes for the tech lock. Um, I'm not going to fully assemble this now, all I'm going to do is strip this apart and then I can get some, uh, clean up the insides and all that, because once you've um, riveted this together especially, when you get around to sanding it all and all this, that and the other, it gets quite hard to work on your inside, well, it gets nearly impossible to work on your inside edges. So I'm going to work on all of this now, then I can clean it all up, screw it together and then give it final finishing. So I'm just going to give this a bit of sculpting on the uh, vibro saw and the belt sander and we'll see what we come up with. Let's have a go. Right, there we go, that's just, uh, let's give it a rough shape to how I want it. Um, I've ground off some of the bottom so that it's a straight through hole. So if any water or anything gets in it, it'll just go straight through. Um, and like I said, I'm not really, well, I'm not at all going to be carrying this, so it's just fun anyway. So I can just give this a bit of a hand clean up now. And then we can uh, look at assembling. We can start bending out all these edges where it's going to catch and, well, we'll see what goes on. So uh, I'll just give this a quick hand finish and... Well, we'll get to assembling it. Right, this has just had all the burrs taken off and I'm just going to quickly bolt this together with the screws that go in the back there uh, just so we can get a kind of quick look as how it's going to be and then I can take this to the uh, belt grinder and do all of the fine, uh, final nice bits of polish in, do all the kind of edge work on it and then I can put the final two rivets in and then that will be locked, that will lock solid around the blade then and I'll just take a heat gun and well, in fact I'll do that before I put the final rivets in, a heat gun and just take off these edges here, uh, sorry bend out these edges. So back in a sec. Right, I've kind of cut this a little bit short to be honest. Um, reason being is I've took on this, taken this all out and give it a clean up and kind of put it all together. Put a couple of rivets at the bottom and I've put the tech lock at the top. And actually it looks perfectly reasonable and nice and pretty and all the rest of it. The issue is, is I've just tried it on my belt and because this is such thick kydex, and it's such an aggressive kind of, um, oh, such an aggressively styled knife with all of those contours and grips. It just grips way too uh, much in the kydex itself. And in trying to loosen this up, I've created a, a wobble within it. So, well, the first thing is when you try and put it in, this catches and you get this, which obviously is not good at all. So you can hold this and get it in, but oh, it takes an awful lot of pressure to put it in. Once it's in, it rattles quite a bit. It doesn't come out and it's staying there, but it rattles quite a bit. And getting the thing out takes oh, quite a lot, well, far too much force. So this could be fixed by heating this up and kind of using a stick or something to kind of hand mold some of the contours on the outside yet relieve some of the contours on the inside so it just gripped a little bit less so you could probably do this on the back and keep the definition at the front just to kind of make a nice pretty unit i've also had to because it was also so tight as you can see might be able to see there i've had to space um put two pieces of kydex in and space it down there. It all looks haggard because I'm not going to bother finishing this so I've just given it a quick kind of clean up and well I'm going to throw it in the bin realistically. Um, 
it was a nice idea and something to kind of do with the scrap kydex but this is why I don't use that really thick kydex it just grips far too much it's just a little like on something that was nice and smooth you'd probably get away with it and make yourself a really nice bulletproof sheath but on something small like this with so many kind of hard let's try and get it out again <laughs> so many of those hard contours just makes that grip in so aggressively on the inside there's not really much you could do I mean you could maybe fill in these units and tape across the top there so it is a much more smoother across the top and just allow a little bit of grip on these kind of areas but generally speaking it's not worth it again this isn't something I'm legally allowed to carry so having a belt clip for it is well crap it is useless anyway so I just think I'm going to sack this off. So not everything in the man cave works out as it should and uh, I'll come back to you with some proper kydex and some, well in fact some of my uh, my personal knives which we've got, if I just pan this up if I can, just unscrew everything. We've got all of these to knock up at some point and I've just finished up a little grinding jig so we can move on to those next and then uh, get some kydex on the go so uh, well see you when I see you